Hey everyone, this is Lance. Uh, welcome back to Central Texas Restorations. This is episode seven, and uh, we continue working on the uh, final drive. So, where well, we left off uh, last week, I heated up the uh, the final drive to remove everything, and uh, and we really had to get it pretty hot. And so you can see I can't hardly touch it, but uh, while it's nice and hot, it's a good chance to put everything in the ultrasonic and uh, clean it up. It actually came very clean, um, but still needed to brush a little bit, pull pieces out, just clean things out of all the cracks. And uh, still, it's pretty easy. So now just set about taking uh, everything out. Um, there's a needle bearing that the, uh, that the ring gear drives on, and then there's a uh, axle tube. That's what the axle goes through. And what I'm really trying to get at is a, a seal that was in the middle of there. For some reason, I don't see the uh, video on that, but we just pulled the seal. I just pulled the seal out of there. This is the final drive cover. Um, big ring gear seal there. Just heat it up a little bit to pop it out. And this is the threaded ring that comes out the back. And same thing, there's just a seal there you pop out. So it's really just removing everything that we're going to replace and uh, and getting everything all cleaned up. But it's really in pretty good shape once it comes out. So now we just start putting it back together. Uh, Euro Motor Electrics or Euro Moto Electrics is where I've been buying parts from. Um, Matt Norman over there does a great job. And uh, this is the uh, threaded ring seal. Just uh, put a little bit of uh, oil on it, tap it in. It's a little unusual because you, you tap it in sort of from the back forward. So instead of using a big uh, flat seal driver it's easier just to use a 36 millimeter socket and just kind of tap it easy and uh, and push it in I'm gonna put a link to that brass hammer I bought that on Amazon that thing has been awesome it's that and uh, and a little plastic hammer are the two main things I use all the time but uh, I'll put a link for that it really wasn't too expensive now just getting everything cleaned up this is uh, to replace that that uh, cover seal same thing bought that from Euro Moto Electric and uh, just oil it up and put it in the hole it's a little bit uh, funky to put in because you you heat it up but it just goes in between those two edges so you you pound it in with a seal driver so I could use a hammer on the middle and then I just came back with that big flat actually that's part of my uh, kit to drive the seat the main seals in but I, it was just something big enough to pound it in there flat but uh, no surprise it went in really easy in fact uh, you can see I kind of probably pounded it in a little too far but it's really easy because you just flip it over and push it back through the other way till you get it perfectly perfectly centered and that's what I did here So now to put the seal down inside um, of the final drive housing, that seal right there that I'm measuring goes r way down deep in a recess. So I needed to turn a little uh, driver on the lathe that was the perfect uh, outer diameter to, to uh, bear on the edge of the seal, but then clear the, uh, the uh, housing. So it was great. Just uh, Put it in there, put a little piece behind it to make sure it spun true, and I just took an old piece of aluminum and was able to uh, just attach it to my normal seal driver. Here, um, I cut that real short. I could, it took forever to try to use the heat gun um, to heat that up, and again, just while I'm there, there's another Euromoto electric seal, but uh, I tried to use the heat gun. It took forever. I used that propane torch. As long as you keep it moving, everything's okay. Again, here's that little seal driver. You can see it goes down in there really far. Um, but with that right tool, it, it pounded in great. But anyhow, I ended up using the torch to heat that. And it probably took 10 minutes with the torch to get it hot enough. Um, same thing here. <clears throat> I, I show using the heat gun, but I use the heat gun and the torch. And uh, what I'm trying to do here is get it really hot uh, to... Uh, 
to put the uh, pinion gear back in and I go inside, I've actually got it in the freezer and uh, heating that up to you know, a couple hundred degrees and taking that gear out of the freezer was awesome. Now this is the needle bearing, same thing out of the freezer. Just pull that out and uh, new needle needle bearing for the, uh, for the ring gear and pull it out of the freezer, put a little gear lube around it. And uh, this is the thing in the earlier video, see me tapping out. Um, and that, that seal that I put in is down below there, but look at how this goes in. It just, once I get it straight, it just pushes in by hand. Had a little driver that I was gonna tap it in with, but it just basically fell into the hole. So same thing, I, I don't know the video, but putting the ring gear in, you can see it when I disassembled, but uh, it just sits down in there. And uh, now I'm gearing up that bearing, or oiling up the bearing put a new gasket on and uh, I'd kind of forgotten that gasket only goes one way so it took me a second staring at it to figure out oh yeah it goes that way but that bearing fits on that aluminum cover <clears throat> so what you do is um, you have to heat it up but you need to have something to protect the seal from those splined edges and it's amazing a, uh, a uh, soda can fits perfectly over everything and allows you to protect the seal and slide right down over. So you just cut that, put a soda can over it, and, uh, and line everything up and it goes down, but it won't push over by hand that bearing. So you just got, this one you don't have to heat up crazy hot, but you just spend a little time, you know, this is probably, I cut a bunch of footage out. This probably took, I don't know, 10 minutes, and you can really see it start to almost fall on its own, and I barely put any pressure on it. To, uh, to push it over that bearing. And then you just go back with the uh, washers and the, uh, the bolts. BMW makes a super fancy, expensive special tool uh, that's just a fancy version of that Coke can. Now before, I, luckily I remember before I tightened it, uh, the brake rod needs to go through there and so it looks like I'm pounding it real hard It's just the camera sitting on the bias. I'm not hitting it too hard at all with a soft hammer You can see that thing spins real freely But I had to get that all lined up before I tighten the bolts so the the uh, brake actuating or the brake rod uh, our brake cam would uh, Would turn smoothly so now I'm just spinning those bolts down and Then I need to torque them spoke about before I have like I said some fancy torque wrenches this park torque wrench which is really a bicycle tools is my favorite torque wrench I have this in three eighths and one and quarter inch and they're great so just torqued all those up went around and uh, and that's sort of the cover of the final drive all all buttoned up you can see it the pinion gear turning it turned really nicely So now I just need to pop it out of the uh, the holding fixture and uh, and turn it over so I can complete the installation of that uh, of that brake arm. Oh, actually, no, I, I, I was. I was wrong. Actually, I had to put all the uh, drain plugs in. So this was a no-brainer. Just same thing from Euromoto Electric. Just ordered all new uh, crush washers in copper. And and then I, these two actually were aluminum, but just torqued all the plugs and uh, everything was fine. Now here we are putting the brake arm in like I talked about. A little grease on it. And that actually is open a little bit of oil so you can see there's some o-rings on there that I replaced and, uh, and it just pops through there's a, a solid washer on the other side and then this side just has a little felt washer to uh, to keep debris out just put a new felt washer on there and here's the brake arm before I'd taken it apart I just take a, a center punch and make a little punch where the uh, 
the split line is so you know where to put the arm back on. And just tap it down. It just has one six millimeter Allen bolt and then it actually has a little arrow that you adjust later to show you know where it's in the middle for the wear indicator. Same thing here it is I flipped it over and uh, just getting ready to put the brake shoes on. Just a little bit of grease to keep everything moving smooth but you don't want a ton of lube in there flying around getting on the brake shoes. You can see I labeled those top and bottom just because they weren't bad. Actually, they're in really good shape as far as thickness. I just wanted to make sure I got them in the right spot so I didn't screw up any wear pattern that was in place. But uh, they snap in really nice and there it is. So now that threaded ring is what goes in there to seal the backside. And to keep the, the fluid from coming out, you use this Hylomar. Uh, thread seal, 100 mark blue is what it's called, and it's it's just a a uh, thread sealant or gasket sealant that that BMW recommends. Here I am using the torch uh, to heat this up with all the metal in there, plus that big metal piece holding it in the vise. It takes a long time, but you heat the uh, you heat the uh, final drive housing. You put the threaded ring in the freezer, which you didn't see, and then you use this special four-point uh, tool. And I got this tool. Actually, Euromoto has them. I actually got this from Boxer Two Valve, and uh, and you put that in there, and then just torque it. I can't remember this. It was maybe 70 pounds or something like that. 80 pounds. It's not. It's not too much. Um, and then you put on this. Uh, this. Uh, input gear and it has the same thing a little fiber washer that's disintegrated when you take it apart but it just keeps oil from coming out those threads and then some Loctite but this one is this one's big time torque I think it's 100 and you'll have to check your book but I think it's 130 pounds or something it's a lot and it's a pain to torque this and you gotta have something to hold that gear from spinning. So this is where I use that, I talked about it before, it's a little fixture I made from a from an old drive shaft. You just cut it off, weld it on a plate, and it'll hold everything solid. If you don't wanna make one, uh, Boxer 2 Valve actually sells them also. Um, and it, it's basically, they're making from old drive shafts also, but it's the best one. And here I'm tightening it only because you got to really crank on this thing. So this is a, uh, it doesn't look as big, but this is a big snap-on half-inch torque wrench. And uh, I think it goes up to 180 pounds or something like that. But I think this is 135. And it's it's quite a bit to do. But with that, it's done. The, uh, the final drive is uh, ready to go. Take it out and uh, stay tuned for episode 8 and we'll put the final drive in and get everything going. Thank you.